My patient today is a 51 year old lady who has had significant weight loss naturally uh, losing seven stone in weight uh, over the past um, nine months or so and you can see that she's been left with significant skin laxity on her abdomen um, both vertically and transverse and you can see this bulge in the midline and this is a common feature that you see with very large or massive weight loss patients uh, where they have this change to their uh, uh, torso. You'll also notice that she's got quite a lot of laxity to the anterior thighs and also the medial thighs as well um, and she has a, a small amount of residual fat still left over. When you feel her rectus muscles you can feel that there's a slight divarication there which is very, a very common feature um, for massive weight loss patients primarily because they've had a lot of visceral fat which they have now which has caused the abdomen to expand and now that they've lost it they've left with this um, weakening of the anterior abdominal uh, wall. So what I'm going to do today is a fleur-de-lis abdominoplasty which involves both a vertical scar and a horizontal scar. Now in this particular patient I've positioned the scar quite low down uh, in an effort because she's got a lot of uh, sagging skin here. She also has sagging of her mons pubis and having a, an extended scar I can put a lot of tension laterally which will actually elevate her thighs as well and you can see what effect that has if I move the skin upwards in that position here. So the scar actually is quite low placed, it's just above the pubic area here, about eight centimeters above her vulval commissure and it extends quite far laterally. The upper incision marking is provisional and I'll be able to make more of an idea of how much to remove during the surgery itself. I anticipate uh, this area to be resected for the vertical scar but equally this will also be adjusted in, during the surgery uh, if required. The belly button will be repositioned along that midline scar. Now she doesn't have a huge amount of residual fat on her abdomen so it's not necessary to do a large amount of liposuction. But at the end I'll actually do a little bit perhaps in the flanks here just to get that final contour. Here we are at the start of the operation and the first step is to separate the belly button from the surrounding skin. The next step is to raise the abdominal skin and here I am making the bikini line incision that runs from hip to hip. So the dissection is now complete, the abdominal flap is raised and this is where the skin was originally and the skin has been raised all the way up right up to the zippy sternum here and you can see that she's got a bit of a bulge just here which represents separation of her rectus muscles which have come out laterally as a result of her visceral contents because she had a lot of weight beforehand. Um, the dissection is right up to the costal margins and I preserve all the perforators here laterally which ensures adequate blood supply to the skin flap. So the next step really is to do plication of this rectus muscle here. Um, here's the markings for the plication and it's these two edges that I should bring together which will flatten the rectus muscle and repair this weakness, particularly the lower abdomen here. Okay, The next thing is to make a, a cut right down the midline and then redrape the skin and then take it from there. Really. Once I've worked out how much excess skin there is, I then cut it away. Before I finish, I do some final liposuction to make sure that she has a smooth abdominal contour and no localised deposits of fat remaining. <laughs> 